Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In this episode, we are gonna learn about Python. Now, what is Python? It's a snake. But the cool thing about the snake is that it can help you with a lot of cool things like backend development and machine learning and will help you take over the world. So learning this little snake is quite powerful. Now, don't worry if you don't know anything about Python, we're going to take it from scratch. So if you don't have any program programming knowledge, it's fine. If you know JavaScript, if you've been following this channel, you know, I covered a lot of JavaScript. I will show you how to transition and what kind of changes are between Python and JavaScript. So you don't need to worry about anything. But before we get started, I also want to thank Skill Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, if you don't know anything about Skillshare, let me tell you because it changed me so much and it helped me learn so much. So what it is, it's basically an online learning platform with over 25,000 courses and these vary with basically anything you want. If you want to learn web development, you're going to find some awesome courses on it, uh, design and 3D modeling, whatever you want. Once you join, uh, you, you can pretty much browse through all of the courses. You can click on one, you can watch it. You don't have to pay for each one of them individually, which is really nice because then I don't have to have that mentality of what if this course is not good enough and then I have to refund it and all that crazy stuff. So I don't have to worry about that. I can just click on a course and just watch it. If I don't like it, I can skip to the next one. And I think that's one of the best things about it. And they were very awesome to me and they gave me a link that you can check down below. And if you sign up on under it, uh, you get two months for free, so you have nothing to, to lose. And the annual subscription is only less than $10 a month, which is awesome. So thank you again for Skillshare for sponsoring this. Check the link in the description and let's get into Python. Okay, let's get Python installed. The first thing we need to do is just go to python.org and here we have to go to downloads. So click on download and you're going to have a download page here. Uh, I'm on Windows, so I'm just going to click download Python 3.73. We're going to get the latest one. Uh, there is no real point of doing it in the older one, which is 2.7, unless you want to maintain some older code or whatever. But hey, we're here to learn the new one. So uh, this is what you're going to download. And once it's done, we can just open up VS Code. So let's open up VS Code. I'm going to drop it in here. And we can also check if our Python is installed. So let me just drag this here. All right, perfect. I'm going to close this and I'll just create a new folder in here. So I'm going to go to open folder, hit new, new folder. And I'm going to name this learning the snake, the snake. All right, I'm going to hit select the folder. Again, there we go, because it didn't work for some reason, but that's completely fine. So what we can do is we can open up the terminal and we can actually write some Python code in here if we want. We don't have to actually make a new file. So we can open this up and we can also check if Python is installed. So the way we can do that is we can write Python and we can say dash dash version like so hit enter and it's going to say 3.7.3. .3. Now, if you're on a Mac, uh, it might say two point something. And the reason is because Python is already installed on, on, on Mac computers. So what you need to do there is you're going to have to write everything with Python 3 like that. All right. And that's going to work. Uh, all right. So we have Python 3 installed and we can actually just say Python here. And as you can see, it opens up this little thing and we have three little lines down there, which means that we can write Python code. So if I do two plus two, that's going to give me back four and all the other good stuff. So everything works, but we're not going to do most of our stuff in here because I think that's actually boring. And yeah, I, I just don't like working in here. I saw tutorials doing it in here and I'm like, oh, I cry. Okay, let's get going. Uh, I'm going to close this up. And what I'm actually going to do is we're going to set up VS code for it to work with Python. And the way we can do that is um, we can go to the extension tab here and we can search for Python. All right, Python like that. I already have mine installed, but this is the one, the first one It has 50 million downloads. All right, so it's, it's, you can say it's quite popular. All right, we can install this. And after you install it, you're going to see down here on the bottom well, you're actually not going to see it until we create the file, so I apologize. But what this gives us is linting, debugging, and IntelliSense. So when you write Python code, it's actually going to recognize it and it's going to give you some helpful tips and everything else. Now, once you install this, we can create our first Python file. So 
click on new file and I'm going to call this, let's call it variables.py. Actually, you know what? We're going to keep it super simple. I'm going to call this app.py. All right, there we go. And this is what we have. Now, you might actually get another message here down here saying right where I am, it's a tab can be popped up and it's going to say, do you want to install AutoPep 8? And make sure to install that. All it means is that it's going to help us lint and format our code to Python standards. Well, actually, this is like one standard, but uh, you need you can install that. And whenever you save your file, it's going to auto format it for you. And if it doesn't do that, you can always open up. Uh, you can go to settings here and you can go to, let's see, where is it settings? And you can search for format on save. So here it is format on save and make sure you tick this. And now whenever you hit control save, everything is going to save and auto format for you. Let's write our first Python code. Now, the way we need to do this is all I want you to just follow along with me. All we have to do is write print like that. And as you can see, it recognizes it. So print and then we're going to add some parentheses. And in here, I'm going to add some codes and I'm going to say hello there, Ed, like so. Perfect. And that's it. We can hit save. All right. And we can open up the terminal. And all I need to run this is I can say Python and give the file of the the name of the file in here so it's app.py all right the one that we just created and hit enter and take a look we have hello there ed all right so what's happening here uh we're gonna explore what this print is later on but what you have here is basically a string so what string is is basically text if you're coming from javascript uh, this should be quite familiar for for you it's like console.log and then you message something out and if you're also coming from JavaScript, you don't need to add a, a semicolon in here. So you can keep everything simple. But that's the print. All right. Now let's create another file to talk a bit about variables. OK, I just created a new file. It's called variables. And we're going to talk a bit about variables. What is a variable? Well, you can imagine a variable as being a box there where we can hold different kinds of information. And yeah, you can imagine as like you're moving outside of your house and you can label everything you have in your boxes uh, with a small label. So you know what it contains. Well, the same way applies to programming kind of. <laughs> so let's say we have you can imagine we have a website, right? And we have a cart on our website. Well, we would store like the number of the items that we have in our cart. So we can say like cart equals. Let's say we have three items in our cart. So that's it. That's basically it. You give it a name on the left and you set it equal to the value you want to give it. So we have three and later on we can modify this if we want. We can set cart equal to five or something like that. All right. So that's a variable. Super simple. Now we can also print this out if we want. We can say print and I can just pass that reference. So I don't have to say three here. We don't have to do that. We can just say cart. And now if we take a look and we can just say variable uh, Python variables dot pi hit enter and take a look we have three down there so super simple all you have to do is give it the name set it equal to and the value now we can hold numbers we can hold also a lot of different things so let's go down here we also have strings so we can say set a name variable equal to and this is where we add the quotes all right remember with the print we added the quotes well, it's because it's a string and all a string is, is basically text. So I can say devit here. All right. And we can just print this out again. So I can say name here and now take a look when we hit enter again. Take a look. There we go. We have dev ed. Now, if I take this name and add it to quotes, well, then it's just going to print out name. All right. Because it's a string. Uh, and if you want the variables to show up, you just call them normally. So you just say print name and that's going to put it out for you. All right. So this is a number basically, and you can add comments. Now, what are comments? It's basically a way for you to recognize and give little notes of your code. So you can just say, Hey, this is a number. All right. So this is just kind of a small little text that you can give. This is not going to affect your code. This is just so you know what's going on. 
All right, so this is a number. This would be a string. And we will explore uh, a few different ones here. There's something called float. Uh, so let's create a, huh, all right, what has floats? Well, all float is basically is, I'm gonna create a random number here and set this equal to, it's basically where you have a dot like 24, all right? So maybe a currency, currency, we can set this equal to like 4.6 something, all right? So that's a float for you. Let me add a float, perfect, all right? And we will explore all the other ones later on. But one of the last ones that's probably going to be most used is something called a Boolean. And all a Boolean is, is a true or a false value. So that's all it holds. So you can imagine this as maybe a user is logged in. Well, is he logged in or is he not? All right. So it's only like two different scenarios uh, it has. So is, let's do logged in. All right, and we can set this equal to either true like this or false. All right, so this is a Boolean and we're gonna see how this works later on in if statements and everything else. All right, so that's the basics of variables. All right, I just created a new file and we're gonna take a look at concatenation. So what a concatenation is, is basically combining two different things into one. All right, so in this case, we're gonna take a look at strings. So you can imagine we have a first name, all right, and also take a look as I added this underscore here. And this is so just to give it a way clearer, um, just so this is a bit more easier to read, all right? Rather than doing it first name like this, uh, we, we can also separate it with an underscore to make our variable more readable, all right? So we can create a string. Again, I told you that we can do the double quotes, but we can also do single quotes. So both of those work just fine. Uh, we can keep it in double quotes, that's fine. And I can give it, uh, let's do traversy. All right, and the last name, we can do Johnson. I got you there. Okay, so we can hit save there. Perfect. So how can we combine these two together? Well, we can create also another one if we want. So a full name, and we can set this equal to and now what I can do is I can say first name plus last name. All right, that's it. And that's going to combine both of these strings together. Now let's take a look. If we run this, I'm going to say Python concatenation. I misspelled this, but that's fine. <laughs> Python concatenation.py. All right, and take a look right there. It doesn't work because we didn't print anything out. All right. So we have nothing to see here. So all I have to do is say print and I'm going to say full name. All right. And this will print it out here in the console. So if we do it again, take a look, we have Travis e. Johnson. But the problem is, as you can see, there's no space in there. So we need to add a space in between the first name and the last name. So what we can do is we can add another plus and then we can add just some empty quotes here and I can add a space in here. Now let's take a look again. Do it again, take a look, Travis e. Johnson, everything is good, everything is fire, and everything works perfectly. Okay, let's take a look at other cool things that we can do with strings. So let's take a look with something called format. So I'm gonna say greeting here, all right? And I'm gonna set this equal to, and I'm just gonna say hello there. My name is first name, last name, and I like cookies. All right, hit save. Now, obviously this doesn't work because, uh, you know, we need to add the pluses and separate the quotes. So another way we can do that is add a F at the beginning right here. And then we can take all of our variables that we want to concatenate and just add some curly braces around them. So just grab that, add some curly brace, make sure to have the F here, hit save, and I'll take a look when we run this egg again, I also need to print this out. <laughs> so let's do greeting, hit save, print this out again, and there we go. Hello there, my name is Travis e. Johnson and I like cookies. So this is another cool way that you can interpolate your variables. If you have like a lot of them, uh, rather than having a bunch of pluses in here, 
this looks way cleaner and more easy to read. Okay, now another issue that you might be facing is that you might want to output some text. So I'm going to keep the print here. Let's say I want to do like, uh, I want to add quotes in here. So I'm going to say, Ed once said, and I want to add some quotes here. Magic is dead. All right, well, this kind of breaks everything because we have quotes here. So Python is going to be very confused of what's going on. So what's happening here is that this breaks. Uh, so the way we can fix that is that we can escape this quote here. We can let Python know that, hey, we intend this to be a quote, not an actual string. So you can go here and you can do a backspace like that. And that's going to escape the string. And the same thing you can do it here. All right. And that should fix all of our problems. Let's do it again and take a look. Well, Ed once said magic is dead. So this is the way you can do it. Um, you can also do it like here. Maybe you have just, if you have normal quotes like that, you can say, Hey there, my quote is, and then you can say, yo. All right. So this works fine because we have single quotes as you can see right there, but you might also have the issue here of writing it's or something like that. And that breaks you would still have to add this uh, escape key. All right. So generally that's kind of it. Another cool thing we can do is add triple quotes like that. And now the cool thing is here that we can add multi-line text very easily. So I can say, Hey, this might be, this might be the title. All right. And here I can just go down here. Hello there. This is my article and some more text. All right. Hit save. And now if we take a look at this, as you can see now it formats everything in a new line. Okay. The other thing that we're going to take a look at is strings. So let's create one. I'm going to say, uh, let's go with language. All right. I'm going to set this equal to Python. Perfect. Hit enter. And there are a few cool functions that we can use. Uh, that are built in. If you don't know what functions are, don't worry. Uh, if, if you do, that's great. Uh, but we're going to take a look at functions a bit later on in this video as well. But for now, just follow me. What we can do is we can say len and take a look. All this does is it returns the number of items in a container. So let's take a look at what this does. We can print and I can just add len like so and another parentheses and we can just add the language. All right, hit save. Let's take a look at what this does. And also I named this strings.py. So we have a new file here. If I run this, take a look for some reason, this, oops, uh, let me do Python strings.py. All right. And take a look what we have there. We have six. So basically it goes through all of these one by one and it counts all the letters and it's going to give me back the amount of numbers in this letter. Very cool. All right. Now we can also access each individual letter in this variable. So how can we access that? Let me add a comment here. <laughs> I, I do this because I do a lot of JavaScript, so it's a bit tricky. Uh, that's how you do comments in, in JavaScript. All right. So I can access each individual letter. So how can we do that? We can get the language. So that variable up here, and we can just add some, uh, square brackets. All right. And here, what we can do is we can select the number, uh, based on this text. So how you count is you start from zero and all the way here. So this would be, and that's the index, by the way, if you want to know. So this would be zero index one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if I want the Y, I would do language one. If I want the N, I would do zero, one, two, three, four, five. Then I have five here. All right. And all of this gives me back is the letter N. All right. So that's how you can access each individual letters, but Ed, stop talking and show me what it is. Okay. So I'm going to add a letter here. I'm going to print out the letter at the end. So we can say letter. Okay. And let's do language. And here I can say it's zero and that's going to give me back the P. All right. Hit enter. Take a look. Let me drag this up a bit. We have P. All right. I'm also going to comment this one out. 
Uh, so we only get back that six. Take a look again, we have the P. All right, let's take a look at how we can get the O. So zero, one, two, three, four. All right, so we can do four, hit save, enter, and take a look, we get back O. All right, now another cool thing that we can do is inside here, I can get back only, let's say, the first three if I want. So how can we do that? Well, I can say that I want this to start from zero, all right, so from P all the way to either T, H, or wherever I want. So the way we can do that is we can add a colon here and we can add the number, so three. So it's gonna go from zero to three. Let's take a look and take a look. We have B, Y, T, all right? So it went from here, one, two, three. All right, that's super cool. Uh, you can also, if you want, you can start from I, so I can say one here, and I can also say that, hey, just go till the end, but make sure you start from the uh, second letter here. So you can say one, and rather than adding three, you can just add nothing. And all it means is that it's gonna go all the way to the end. So let's take a look again. Take a look, we have Python now, which is another cool trendy programming language. <laughs> so yeah, that's very cool. Uh, you can also do it the opposite way. So you can do it like so. All right, let's run that as well. And now I have Pyt, okay? So that works as well. Good, so that's it. Uh, what, what I also want to show you is what happens when you go to minus one. So if you add minus one, all it means is that it's gonna go back uh, to the end. So this is zero and minus one goes back to n. So this is gonna give us back n. Hit save, let's take a look again and take a look, we have n. Okay, now we learned that we have these variables. So we have like strings, ints, floats, booleans, and other cool stuff. Uh, the thing is that on each of these, we can apply different kinds of methods, which are kind of like functions, but if you still don't know what these are, don't worry, again, we're gonna cover them later. But I wanna say that you can apply different kinds of cool things on top of these, all right? So I'm gonna remove everything here. I'm gonna keep the Python here, and I wanna show you a few things that we can do. So since this is a string, again, we can apply different cool things on top of it. So these are called, <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing that, string methods, okay? And what you can do, if you have a string, you can apply these different methods on top of it. So maybe I wanna make this uppercase. So all you have to do is say language, all right? So you're gonna get that variable and say dot and take a look, you have access to all these cool different things. So maybe I want to make this uppercase, you can call upper on top. And then you need to add these parentheses. Okay, and there we go. Now I can store this. So upper language, we can do like this language. <laughs> oh, the spelling, greatness. Okay, and then we can print this out to the screen. So upper language, hit save, let's take a look, enter, and take a look, we have Python all uppercased. And you have all of these cool different methods uh, that you can apply depending on what you wanna do. Uh, you can also have lower, so you can lowercase this. Let's change this to maybe a street address. So uh, street of the dead. White Walkers, okay, all right, rip, one episode destroyed, all right, never mind. Okay, so we have that. Maybe I just want everything to be uh, lowercase, so I'm gonna get rid of this, I'm gonna say lower text or something like that and set this equal to, and we can call that language, all right, which should be street maybe or something. So we can say street dot lower like that and call this and we can print out the lower text hit save go up here and take a look everything is lowercase i'm not going to go through all of these because there are a ton of methods here and you're probably only going to use these only whenever you need it it's kind of pointless to for me to show all of uh, all of it for you but you can also explore you can say street dot and as you can see it's going to show up a lot of different things that you can use and it also gives you a bit of uh, of what it does down here, which is super great. Uh, a popular one is we can also do find, so like that. And in here, what you can give is maybe something from this text. So I wanna find the dead, all right? And that's gonna find it for us, and it's gonna 
let's take a look here it's gonna say minus one because it didn't recognize it because this is all uppercase but if i say dead like that hit run it's gonna say hey it's in the location 14 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 all right so it recognizes that it's there uh, so if you want to use the find method uh, maybe to search if there is some text uh, you can use this okay we can also do replace if we want and then i'm gonna leave you alone <laughs> after this one i promise so i can search maybe i want to get the white all right, so I can replace the white and I can add a comma here with whatever I want. So I can say dead storyline. Okay, hit save. And now if we run this again, you're gonna see that we have Street of the Dead, Dead Storyline Walkers, okay? All right, next up is conditional statements. This is where things are gonna make a bit more sense of why would you use these different things and how you're gonna combine them. So we can make a super small little game here. Uh, let's do, I'm gonna call this statements, okay? And I just created a statements file, which we can run with Python, statements.py, okay? And what a statement is, it basically checks if something is true, and if it's true, it's gonna run that specific code. And if it's false, then it's not gonna run that specific code, or you can do something else. So a good example would be that, um, hey, can I, oh, all right, let's see, can I enter the club? All right, that's a, that's a good one. So we can have an age variable that's, let's say 15. So we cannot enter the club. Now, how can we create this if statement? We can say, hey, kind of like plain English, if age, and here we can use different kinds of operators. I can say is bigger than or smaller than or equal than, and for that we can, we need to use double equals. And the reason we need to do this is because we want to check this value against this value. All right. One equals basically means that we want to assign something and you would use that to a variable. And if statements, you're always going to use double. Okay. So double equals because you want to check this value compared to this. Okay. So we're going to check if our age is smaller than 18, then we want to do something. Now, how can we encapsulate of the thing that's going to happen only inside this if statement? So only if this is true, something should run, or if it's false, something should run. Well, in JavaScript, you know that we have something like this. You would add curly braces, and now this code only runs if this statement is true. All right, for now, I'm going to change this to if age is yeah, if, if age is smaller than 18, then, well, this is true, all right, because we have 15. So you can just kind of imagine that we have, if 15 is smaller than 18, then this code in here should run, all right? But in Python, it's a bit different. We don't need to add these curly braces, all right? What we can do is we can just add this colon like that and hit enter. And as you can see, that's going to indent our code in here. So basically, this kind of encapsulates everything here. Um, and all the code we add here, so I can say print, hey, you are quite young. Hit save. Let's just take a look at what this does. If I run this code, I can say python statements.py, hit enter. As you can see, we have, hey, you are pretty young. And again, this only runs because our statement is true and because we indented this code. All right, let's change this to bigger than and see what happens. Hit enter and take a look, nothing gets output because this is not true. Now, on the other hand, if we add print here and say, hey, or something, this is gonna run because this has nothing to do with our if statement here. All of our if statement um, that gets checked is the one that's indented like this. So you need to add these colons and indent it. All right, this always gets run here. All right, so this is how we can write an if statement. And now we can also check if, uh, let's say that we can check if it's young else. If it's not young, then we can print something else out. 
So what we can do is we can go back to the beginning of the line and we can say else. And as you can see, it indents it again. We can print out something else. Now let's take a look here. If our age is, let's say, bigger than 18, then this gets printed out. So you can enter the club else you are too young. All right, so let's let's recap this again. It checks the age. If our age is true, if our age is bigger than 18, then we can enter to the club. Else, this gets output. All right, so if this is false, it automatically jumps to this else statement. Okay, let's take a look. Python, run this. You are too young because we're 15. However, take a look if we can change this to 21. Hit save. Let's take a look again. Print this out. You can enter the club. So how about that? It's super, super simple. All right. We can also do another check if we want. What we can do is we can go here at the beginning of the line again and we can say else if so elif this is how we write it and what we can do here is we can add another statement maybe we, we need we can also check for a specific number if we want maybe we can say hey if our age is double equals to 60 or something like that i can add that colon again and say print hey you are 60 that's awesome like that, all right, hit save, let's take a look. All right, so we have that, but if we change it to 60 now, it's gonna go in that statement. So what's happening is it checks this, this is false. Actually, it's not false, that's a, actually a good example. You can see you can enter the club. Now, why, this, why is this happening? And we added that if it's 60, it should print this out. Well, it's because it checks this one first. So if our age is bigger than 18, which it is, so it's going to print this out and it's going to stop. Okay? It's not going to it's it's not going to end up down here or down here anymore. And the way we can fix this is we can just move these two statements up. So I can set this equal to 60 here. So it checks this first just in case and then else if we can do 18 here if it's bigger than 18. And then we need to kind of change these two texts from here to here. So we can just kind of move these around all right and say you can enter all right hit save and take a look again now we have hey you are 60 that's awesome and if i change to something else like 50 then we are going to end up in this else if statement so there we go okay so we have basically the equals we have this one we also have access to uh bigger than or equal so this also checks if we add 18 on the dot this will work just fine uh, we also have a not operator which i'm going to show you so let's get rid of everything i'm going to say let's do age equals 24 again and let's also do this i can say if my age is not equal to 24 then I can print something out. You are not 24. All right, let's take a look. If we run this, nothing's going to get printed out because all this means is that it, it should not be 24. All right, it's pretty self-logical. Uh, but if we change this to something like 20, hit save, run this again, take a look at that, you are not 24. What we can also do is we can check if two values are the same or two values are true or false. So I can have my age can be equal to 24 and your age can be equal to 18. All right. And I can say if my age is bigger than 18 or 20 and I can say and your age is bigger than 15, which both of these are true. If we check 24 is bigger than 20 and your age is bigger than 15, then we can say print both of you are old enough. All right. And this code, what I want to tell you 
if I can make this run, this code only runs if both of these values are true. So if this is true and this is true, then run this little sucker, okay? If one of these is false, this is not gonna run anymore. So if I change this, your age is 18 now. So if it's bigger than, let's say it's something that's not bigger, like 60, uh, and if we print this out again, as you can see, nothing happens because both of these values need to be true. Uh, if I only want one value to be true and this to work, I can change it to or, all right? And all that means is, hey, if this is true, that's fine. All right, the other one doesn't need to be true anymore. So this is like, hey, just one is enough for me, all right? Now, at the end of the day, the if statement, all it checks if something is true or false. And you can remember that we used to mess around with uh, the Booleans, so that specific data type. So I can say is logged in, is logged, and I can set that to true, all right? So since this is true, our is statement is gonna work. So if I say if is logged in, and I don't need to check anything here because this is true already, then we can run a specific code. Print, welcome user, Jesus Christ, 24, okay? Uh, this will run automatically. So if we take a look again, hit run, take a look, welcome, user okay so all the if statement checks at the end of the day if our value in here is either true or false all right so at the end of the day it's just basically a boolean um, and i want to kind of talk about truthy and falsy values and all that is is that specific things are truthy values and specific things are falsy values um, if we take a look now, if I say if one, let's print this out, it's gonna work fine because this is a truthy value. And the basic uh, falsy values that you need to be aware of is, let me say falsy values is zero. All right, so the number zero is gonna return us false. Uh, empty quotes, that means there's nothing in it, so it's false and also empty curly brackets are also false. So if you add one of these in here, this is not gonna print out anymore. All right, so if I add if zero and hit run, take a look, we get nothing output. Let's take a look at lists. So I'm gonna create a list.python. And all a list is, is that you can imagine it's basically another box, so another variable that can hold multiple values. So for now, we only had like cart equals to 10, we had name equals to add. Well, you can imagine a list as being like, hey, all the users, okay? So we can create users, set that equal to, and we can do a curly bracket here. So we can say add, we can say homeboy, all right? And we can say Anna, John, snow betrayed okay so we have all these different persons perfect so now we can access all of these inside if we print them out so if i say print users and we run this code so lists uh, python lists.py hit enter and take a look we get this output perfect now we can also access individual uh, users if we want and the same thing applies that the thing we did with the strings so we can just add curly braces here and we can say zero and it's going to return us the first one if we want so let's take a look again and we get ed we want the third one we can do two and we get anna for that take a look everything works just fine okay perfect uh, we can also add different things in here so it doesn't have to be strings we can do numbers uh, we can mix them up if we want, and we can create other things as well in here. So everything applies. Okay, that's very cool. Another thing we can do is, let's say we want just a few numbers. What we can do is, let's say we have a lot of zeros. So a lot of zeros. And we can set this equal to, I can have one, that's fine. I'm gonna print this out as well. Print a lot of zeros. All right, that's going to return me only one element, which is one zero. But if I want to have multiple, I can add a multiply 20 if I want. And that's going to give me 20. Take a look. It's automatically going to generate uh, that list for me with 20 zero values. 
Okay, very cool. Uh, so what we can also do is we can slice this list up, up if we want. Uh, let's go back to the original one we had here. So print users. And rather than doing this, again, remember the way we did with the strings, we can also get from zero all the way to three if we want. So this is only gonna return us the first three, as you can see, perfect. And we can do, again, all of them from zero, or we can start from four if we want. So the same thing pretty much applies. So now it starts from snow because zero, one, two, three, four. So snow and trade. That's all that we are getting back. We can also do something called unpacking, unpacking. And all it does is we can store out these different values to other variables. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, what we can do is, let me actually give you a more simple example here. So we have users up here and let's say we have a, again, cart with items. So I'm gonna say items equals to, let's say I have a laptop, a phone, and a joystick. All right, perfect. And I want to take these individual ones out. So maybe I want to have the laptop, we can do it like so. I can have items zero, all right? That's gonna give me the laptop. So that's one way we can do it. And now I can print out the laptop. Okay, let's take a look. Boom, boom, boom. We have the laptop down there, perfect. Uh, this is one way we can do it. We can also do it this way, let me show you. We can have these here and what we can do is I can say just laptop comma. So these are the variables, phone, joystick, and set that equal to items. All right. And this is automatically going to unwrap all these different elements and put them in all of these variables. So I can print out laptop now and take a look. We have the same thing. Perfect, laptop. I can also do phone and everything is gonna work the same way. Phone, open this up again and take a look, we have phone. And what if I only want, uh, let's say I only want the laptop, I don't really care about the other ones. Well, I can delete everything here and I can add this multiply symbol and say other, all right? So this is how you can you unwrap only the first element and then everything else get jumbled up in this other. All right, so if we take a look again, we have, all right, we don't have phone anymore here. So I'm gonna say laptop and take a look, laptop is still available, but everything else we jumbled up in this other. So you just, you just add that multiply symbol and take a look, everything else is still there if you want. Awesome, now there are other cool things that you can do on, on these lists. So remember with the string, we had those different kinds of methods on the string. So I'm gonna delete everything here, all right? And down here, let's take a look on how we can add an item to this user. So I'm gonna add a comment saying add items. All right, so we can just get that letters, not letters, we have users, <laughs> I apologize. And what we can say is we can add a dot append. And take a look, all of this, append object to the end of the list. So I can append an object like that. I can add quotes and I can say new item. Hit save and we can print this out again. Print users, hit save. Take a look and now we have a new item down here. So we added that to the list. Uh, we can also add it to a specific place if we want and we can use insert for that. So we can say users dot insert and we can give it the position. So as you can see, it asks for our index. So maybe I want to insert it to add. So I can say zero and I can add a comma and I can say beginning item. Let's take a look, hit enter. And as you can see, it added before add. All right. So you can get the position of it if you want with insert. We can also remove things. So I'm gonna say remove items. All we have to do, I'm gonna take this and put it down below like that, give some space. What we can do is we can say letters, not letters, I keep saying letters, users dot pop. All right, and this way we can remove something. And if you don't add anything to it, it's just gonna remove the last element. Now, our last element is new item because we added it up here. All right, we appended it up here. 
So if we take a look now, we're just gonna get rid of that. All right, and if I get rid of this append, I'm gonna comment it out like that, then it's gonna remove the trade, all right? Because we're not adding to it anymore. So we have snow as the last one. All right, there are a lot of different ones that we can use here, but those are the basic methods that we can use on lists. All right, before we move on, I quickly wanna show you two more that we have, which are kind of like lists, but not really. Um, just as an example, uh, we have something called tuples, which is kind of almost the same thing. So I can create a, let's do, let me see what we have here. We have users. So I'm gonna say letters down here, down here. And rather than adding these uh, brackets, we can add curly braces like that. And I can say A, B, C, let me do A, another B, C, D. All right, so the difference between this and this is that with this one, so with the tuple, this is called a tuple, we cannot modify the data in here. We can only read it and iterate through it, which I'm gonna show you in just a bit. And we also have something called sets, which basically only, uh, only lets you have unique numbers. So you cannot have two Bs because you can have two Bs in here in tuples and in lists if you want. But with sets, you can only have unique numbers. So I'm gonna get rid of this. For now, I'm gonna comment it out. Letters, so you cannot have double Bs here. And the way you can write a set is you can add these curly braces, all right? So that's the difference between sets, tuples, and lists. Okay, let's take a look at loops. I'm gonna create a loops.py file here. And the first one we're gonna take a look at is called a for loop. For loop, all right, there we go. And the way we write this is, basically you would use a for loop to iterate through a list or a tuple or a set, okay? So let's take a look on how we can do this. I'm gonna create a users uh, list again. So in here, I would have again, Ed, Anna, John, Podrick and Smith. All right, so we have a, a list and I wanna iterate through all of these. So you would write like so. You would say for and you would say user, so the single uh, user in, and here is where you define which list you wanna use. In this case, we wanna use the users. You would add the colon like that. And again, take a look, we are indented again. So this code runs in here. If we just print out the user, let's take a look. We can say loops.py, hit enter. Actually, we need to say Python loops.py, like that, hit enter and take a look. It runs through all of them. So what happens basically is it checks each individual item inside this user. So it says add it prints it out and then it jumps back here. It checks the second one, prints out the second one, goes to the third one, prints it out again. So theoretically what we can do is we can say print, hello there user. And now every time it goes through this loop and through each item, it's gonna print out all the code inside this indentation. Okay, so if we run this again, as you can see it says hello there, user and it prints it out for each one of those. All right, so that's how we can do a loop. Uh, another cool thing that we can do is we can use a function called range. So let me show you that really quickly because we can also use that inside this for loop. So I can create another, let's say I'm gonna create a list and take a look here. If you wanna do a list, you're gonna see that this is actually a built-in function inside Python. So we cannot use this as a variable name because what we can do is with this list, let's say I have a string, so name equals Edwin, like that, and take a look if I just add list to this and wrap it around it and then print out the name. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this for a bit hit save, take a look, it creates a list for me out of this string. All right, so be aware of that. 
and make sure you don't add list like that simply. So I can say my list, that's fine. That's gonna work just fine. And what I can do is I have another function that I have access to, it's called range. And what this does is you can pass in basically um, a starting value and an ending value. Now this is not gonna do anything on its own, so, but if we take it and make it a list, I can just drop this inside a list and run it, take a look, we have zero all the way to nine. All right, so 10 is not included but it generates us a list in the range from zero to nine. If I want this to 100, I can do 101. All right, hit save, and that's gonna generate me a list. Take a look from zero to 100. Awesome. Uh, and we can also add another parameter to this if we want. So the zero is the starting value. Uh, the second one is the ending position. And the third one is how we want to increment it. So I can increment this by five if I want. Hit save, let's take a look again and take a look. Now we have zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. All right, so this is what you can also use. Cool, and the reason I brought this up is because we can create a for loop only with the range. So I can say for, let's say i for index in range and I can say from 0 to 20 so maybe I want to create a loop that runs 20 times all right and in here I can print out I run 20 times hit save and take a look print this out and boom take a look this runs 20 times oops this messed up but you get the idea so we can use this range what we can also do is Let's go here, let's get rid of this. We can also use a string if we want to loop over. So I'm gonna create a name again and set that equal to Edwin. And I'm, I can say for S as in string in or letter for letter in name. And what we can do is we can print out each individual letter. Let's take a look again. Boom, take a look, we have ED are all separated, okay? So that's how we can use a for loop. We have another one called a while loop, all right? And how this works is basically it checks a statement and as long as that statement is true, it's always gonna run, all right? Let me show you what this means basically. We can do while, let's say while true, we can print out I am running. All right, so basically what happens, don't run this code yet, because what happens is as long as this value is true here, this is always gonna run. So it's gonna say, oh, it's true, I'm gonna run. Oh, it's true, I'm gonna run. So this is gonna create us a endless loop. And we don't want that because, yeah, that's just not a good idea to have an endless loop going on 20,000 miles per hour. So what we need to do is we need to have a condition here that is true, but eventually it turns false. All right, so it stops. So you can imagine it as something like this. We can have an age and that's, or just a number. Yeah, let's just have 10 or something. And I want this to run only from 10 all the way to 100, so 90 times. And what I can say is while age is smaller than 100, then run this code. However, this is always still gonna be true. So what we need to do is inside this while loop, we need to increment that age. So eventually it's gonna turn this statement to false, okay? So all I can say is age equals to age plus one. And all that is happening in here is that, hey, we set age equal to whatever the age is, in this case it's 10, and then we add one to it. So then it's gonna be 11. Then when it's gonna run again, it's gonna be 11 here, uh, equal to 11 plus one, which is gonna be 12. And it keeps on going. So let's take a look, hit this, and as you can see, this console logs out 90 times for us. Okay, there we go. We can also shorthand this. We don't need to write h plus one. What we can do is we can say h plus equals one, and that also works just fine. So run this. As you can see, we have the same results. Perfect, so that's the while loop and that's the for loop. 
Now, before I go, I actually want to show you one more thing that we can do here. Uh, I'm going to change this to something smaller like 20. And I'm going to set the age to zero. All right, we were just born. Okay. And this is going to run all the way up to, let's set it equal to smaller or equal. Okay. So it runs till 20. And then we increase the age, which is good here. And let's just change this to I am growing up. All right. But the cool thing that we can do here is we can go down here and say, we can also add if statements. So it checks every time it loops, it checks uh, if a statement is correct or not. So I can say if our age is double equal to 14, all right? So if we get to 14, I can say print, I am independent now. In the independent now. Oh my God, my writing skills are terrible. Okay, but what we can do is we can break out of this loop, all right? And the way we can do that is we can say break. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna stop the loop as soon as it detects this break. So it's gonna run, it's gonna start from zero, it's gonna increase to one, two, three, four, five, six, as soon as it gets to 14, well, this statement becomes true, so this is gonna run. It's gonna print out, I am independent now, and it's gonna break, and it's gonna stop the whole thing. So let's take a look. So as you can see, if we run this, it runs one, two, three, four, five, six, and as soon as it gets to 14, it's, it prints this out, and it breaks, and it stops everything from working. All right, and what we also have is we can also skip a specific number. So let's say we want to get to 14, but I don't want it to detect 14. I want it to jump over. So as soon as it gets to 14, what I can also do is say continue. All right, and that's going to skip through it. So let's take a look. And let me actually console log something else out here. I'm going to just print out, let's print out the age, okay? I'm going to get rid of the statement as well. We're going to keep everything short and simple. If I run this again, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we have 14 here. And I'm going to, and I'm going to move this print down here. All right. So not inside this if statement, but down here, hit save and let's run this. And as you can see, as soon as it gets to one, two, three, four, 13, 14, it skips the 14 because we added this continue in here. Okay, I also want to quickly talk a bit about immutability. I don't want to get super into it, but I want you to know the basics so you don't pull your hairs out because you don't know what's happening. Okay, so let me just show you a quick example. We have fruit here, that's an apple, okay? And we have another fruit, and I'm just gonna set this equal to the fruit from up there, all right? So fruit from up here. Now, if I print out other fruit, like that, then we are gonna get apple. Okay, very cool. But now I can also take the other fruit and maybe change the value if I want. Maybe I want banana because I love banana. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Hit enter, look, we have banana. So we can always change it and that's completely fine. We can also do this with numbers and everything is no problem, but take a look when we have lists. Um, so we have maybe a fruits and set this equal to apple, banana, and kiwi. Okay, and then we have other fruits, and I get the value from there, from up there. All right, so I'm basically copying it over, and now maybe I just wanna add something to the other fruits. So I'm gonna say other fruits. Uh, maybe I wanna append a, <laughs> tell me a good fruit. Uh, a dragon fruit. Is, is that the thing? Dragon fruit? Anyway, if we print out the other fruits, let's see what we have. Cool, we have the dragon fruit. However, take a look if we print out fruits, then that value also got modified. We didn't have a problem with the other ones when we did it with, with normal strings or numbers. But take a look, we changed the other fruit, but fruits still changed. Here, what we have is we, we just pass a reference of this original one down here. And now when we change the other one, well, since we have a reference, it's also gonna affect this up here. So it's gonna change the list. All right, so just be careful if you don't use strings 
uh, numbers and booleans and things of that sort, uh, we can do a copy of it rather than changing it like so. So what we can do here is we can say fruits dot, we can create a copy, okay, like that. And now we can append it to the other fruits. We can change it however we want. But when, when we print out the fruit, as you can see down here, we get apple, banana, kiwi. All right, so we're not actually modifying it. So let me just quickly give you the immutable values and, and mutable values so you know uh, what, what and how it works. So booleans are uh, immutable and you can use ints and floats and tuples strings, uh, not sets, we cannot use that. So these are the basics that, yeah, you can mess around, we can change it, and it's not going to affect the other ones. However, uh, make sure when you have things like lists um, and sets, all right, we covered that, and we're going to cover something called dictionaries. Um, these always keep a reference. So be careful what you change, because it might affect the original. Okay, very quickly, I'm going to cover functions for you. Uh, all you need to know about functions is basically uh, it's a wrapper around a specific code that you want to write. So rather than writing, let's say I want to write an intro introductory text like print, hello there, my friend. Print, what is your name? And then I'm going to show you something cool we can do. We can ask an input from a user. So all you have to write is input. So I'm going to say name equals to input. All right, this is another built-in function that we can use. And then in case I can say print, uh, let's do nice to meet you. I'm going to add an empty space plus name. All right, let's take a look. Let's run this. I'm going to say Python functions.py. Hit enter. And as you can see, the program stops now. Hello there, my friend. What is your name? So I can say Edwin. Enter. Nice to meet you, Edwin. OK, so we can have this, but imagine that we have some code that repeats itself. So maybe I want to run this another time. Well, then I had I have to do this, which gets really ugly really quick. And I don't want to do this because I'm not a masochist. Well, sometimes I am, but not today. So I can get rid of these and I can drop everything inside a function. So I can cut everything out and we can name it and we can create a function with this def keyword. So we can define a function and then we give it a name. So pick out a name of basically what your code does. So my code basically greets me. So I can say greeting. All right, and what we need to do is we need to add some parentheses and then we need to add these colons again. Okay, and here goes all of our logic. Now we need to tab everything in here because this is part of this function. Hit save and now I can just call this greeting. And I can call it multiple times if I want. So I can call greeting, greeting. And when you add these parentheses, all it basically means is that you're invoking that function. So you're running it. Here is where you just define the function. OK, you let Python know that, hey, I have this function. But I don't want you to run it. I only want you to run it when I call this greeting here. So let's take a look. So take a look here. If I just add a print, just to prove it to you, the function is not running yet. Hit save. Let's run this and take a look. We have that print first. All right. So this didn't run. It basically checks this. It memorizes it. It then prints out. And as soon as it gets to the invoke function, it jumps in to this function here. OK, now we can do it the same way. Add. And as you can see, it's asked me again because I added two of them. So Anna works the same way just fine. So that's it. That's pretty cool. What we can also do let me get rid of this, make it a bit more simple. Uh, I can print out something like, uh, we can also do it like, hello there, and I can say plus name. All right, but we don't have anything here with name inside this function. So what we can do, let me just clean this up a bit. What we can do is we can add a parameter. So name, all right, but this, is, this means nothing yet. So when we're invoking the function, we can pass something into it. So I can say add here. And basically what happens is this add goes from here and here and in here. All right, so let's take a look again. Python, run this, hello there, add. So this is how you can add a parameter to a function. Now, when is this useful? Well, maybe we can do something like this. 
uh, define multiply by 10, all right, or something like that. And here I can add my multiply, uh, or we can add the number that I want to multiply by. And here, what I can do is I can print out uh, 10 times, where's my times? There we go, number. All right, so whatever the user passes in. So here I can say multiply by 10, all right, and I can pass in whatever number I want. So let's say 50 and run this. And there we go, we have 500. We can do 20. So basically we're creating this wrapper that does all the logic for us in here. Now, the thing with this is, before I move on from uh, from functions is that we cannot store this value. So if I say multiplied number is equal to multiply by 10 and I pass in like 20, okay? Hit save and I want to print out this multiplied number. Okay, let's take a look. And as you can see, we have none, which means, hey, we don't have anything going on. We do have this print here but our actual value didn't get stored. Print doesn't really do anything. It just outputs something on our screen, okay? But this function didn't actually return anything back to us, so I can store it in here, all right? It just output that text and that's it. Our multiply number is none. It's an empty value, it doesn't exist, all right? So how can we actually return that number? So when we call this function, we have it stored somewhere. Well, rather than printing something out, what we can do is we can say return, 10 times number and that way we can actually store this so when this function runs it cal calculates this and then it returns that number and it's in here it's going to save it to this multiplied number all right so it just returns everything at the end and it saves it in our multiplied number so if we take a look again take a look we have 200 and that's the actual value i have saved in here in this variable all right so that's return as well what we can also have is uh, we can also have a default parameter already so we can say def we can define let's say add all right and what we can have here is let's say we want to have i don't know a number all right so that's one and another number that i want to add but i can have a default one let's say by one, all right, so we can have a default number here already. Perfect. So this way, let's say I wanna return number plus by, okay? And down here, I'm gonna just get rid of everything in here. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna just print or just add a number. I'm gonna create a variable and say add. I can say 10 by five. Okay, and print added number. Let's take a look at what we have now. So we have 15, all right, so we're just adding these two numbers together. But the cool thing is if we set it equal here to one, uh, we can just get rid of this one and our program doesn't break. As you can see, it just adds 11 by standard. So you can just have a default one just in case your user doesn't really add anything in here. Uh, another thing we can have, I'm gonna remove this so I can have two values. Let's say 20, all right, so this is gonna give us 30. Uh, if this kind of doesn't make any sense, now it does make sense because we have add, so we can kind of presume what this does, but sometimes you might have functions that doesn't really make that much sense of what parameters they accept. So you can actually add number here and set that equal to 10 and by set that equal to 10. And that's not gonna do anything, but it's a nice way to show uh, the user or maybe you uh, of what these parameters actually are. So we're just naming them basically. And let me show you quickly what are dictionaries. So dictionaries.py, there we go. And these basically are, they kind of look like lists or tuples, but what they have is basically a key pair value. So a good example I can give you here is something like a user and you can set that equal to, and this would be a dictionary. So you would add curly braces and you would add quotes and you would name it like so. Uh, you would have maybe a name and you can add a colon and set that to add. You can have 
an email and you can have that to john at yahoo.com and we can have an age if we want and set that to 20 so you can have different kinds you can have um you can also have numbers you can also have lists if you want in here you can say purchases purchases and you can have a list if you want in here so like that you can have some values so that works as well so take a look that's a dictionary now we can access things in this dictionary if we say user i'm just going to print something out here user and you just add those brackets again and what you do is you say name and that's going to give us back the name so python Dictionary, dictionary, <laughs> dictionary. Oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. Dictionaries.py. Did I? No, oh, that's not correct. No. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, we get back Ed. So we can change this. If we want to access the email, we can do email. And that's going to work just fine. And this is where we can access everything. Okay, let's say I want to change the name. We can say user, the name, I want this to be something else. I can set this equal to Anna. And that's gonna work the same way. Print user, and we just modify that. So let's take a look, and now our name is Anna. What we can do is we can also loop over this if we want. We can say for, we can say for each item in user we can print out the item all right let's take a look and take a look we have name email age and purchases so this would actually be the key and this would be the value so proper name here would be the key and we would print out the key let's take a look again and as you can see name email age purchases now again just like the strings and lists and all the other uh, things we have some built-in methods that we can use on top of it so we have access to the items and the keys uh, so I can print out user.keys if I want and that's going to give me back the keys there we go and it's going to give me back the keys in a list we can do items as well so let's take a look as you can see that's that's actually giving me back a list of tuples in here with a key value pair all right, so how can we actually access this if we want? Let's take a look. What we can do is we can say for key in items. All right, so this is what we did, and we did print key. Okay, now take a look. We can do actually user here. I apologize, like that. Um, what we can do is we can just call that items. So user dot items, like that. And now what we have is a tuple. Remember, we have the email and the John. So we can extract those by having key here as the key. And I can add a comma and I can also extract the value. Value like that. So I can print out the key and the value. So I can have access to both of those without a problem. So take a look, name Anna, all right, email John and all the other good stuff. So that's a way you can access both of those together. What we can do is we can also check if a value is available for us. So let me remove everything here and I can say if maybe name uh, is in this dictionary. So I can say if name in user, then I can print out it is. Oops, make sure to add quotes. Hit save. Let's take a look. Print out the dictionary. And as you can see, it is. We can change this to something we don't have, like logged. Let's take a look now. And as you can see, it doesn't return us anything because it's not true. Another topic that I didn't cover, which are classes, but I feel like those can take up a whole nother video because this can take forever to make. So. Uh, if you want to see that, make sure to let me know and I'm going to do a whole video on classes. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, what you can also have is Python basically has a lot of built-in um, libraries and that you can use. 
and there are a lot of third-party modules as well that you can install. So things like Django or you've seen things with TensorFlow like machine learning, uh, those are separate modules that you can import into your project. But to show you one really quick one, uh, I can import random. That's something that's available for us. And with this one, we can generate a random number or whatever we want. So I can say, uh, let's do a random num. Let's do a guess number. And we can set this equal to random dot. And here are all the different things that we have access to. So as you can see, we have something called random int that just basically creates us a random number between certain values that we give it. So A and B, as you can see here, returns a random integer in range A, B. So I can say between zero and 20, just return me a number. So if I print out guess number, then you're going to see that um, we got 13. If we keep running this, it's just going to generate us a random number. Now, I actually have a small little challenge for you. I want you to create a random, random number guessing game, and this is how it's going to work. Uh, the computer is going to generate a random number. You need to guess that number. You need to guess that number. And the computer is going to give you feedback based on the on your input. So if you guess 10 and the actual guess number is 15, then it's going to say, hey, my number is higher. All right. So if else statements there, all right, just to let you know. Good. And finally, if you guess more than six times, then you lose. All right. And we have arrived to the end of this episode. Hope you liked Python. This is one of my favorite snakes to play with in my personal time. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. No, cut that out of the video. But yeah, thank you again so much for watching. Make sure to hit the bell if you want to stay notified of the upcoming videos. And also feel free to recommend down below whatever you want to see next because I take a look at all the comments even though I, I just cannot respond to every comment anymore. So I apologize for that. But I think a look at them i take your recommendations into consideration and yeah let me know how it goes here's the python this is the python i was talking about not the yeah okay all right goodbye